So, um, I wanted to ask you, you were a high, high producing sales agent, a registrar. Can you just describe a little bit about how you went to New York and then, oh, you were promoting the L so much that you wanted to have an L. <laughs> so give me, <laughs> give me your New York and then, yeah, and then going and having the L. Well, New York was in, um, just before Jessica was born and her mom and I were on flag and there were no babies allowed on flag and so we, we, we were set on a garrison mission to set up, uh, it's called the CLO now, mm -hmm. uh, it was called the Flag Operations Liaison Office, FOLO, back then. Mm -hmm. We set up FOLO New York and Jessica was born to us there and I was ops officer and programs chief held from above. Uh, Molly was commanding officer, and for years I made phone calls every day to every org. What's right. your GI? What's your paid comps? Oh my God, paid comps! I haven't said that word in forever. Um, and finally, what finally happened? And I was raising my daughter at that time alone because Molly had been called out to Los Angeles to train for the guardian's office. And then I, I, I got Mexican divorce papers in the mail. Mm. Ooh. And she was, Jessica was out with her at the time and she says, I'm keeping Jessica. Mm. And I just crashed. I just, mm. I couldn't concentrate. My stats crashed. I got kicked off post. Uh, there was an empty post on the org board, flag service consultant. Hmm. So I got into that. And I found I had a talent for selling. God help me. I did. And I sold so many L's. And the way I sold them was L10 is doing this, L11 is having this, and L12 is being this. And the, the I got this from David Mayo. And the idea with L12 completion, you could be whatever you want to be, basically. Mm. And here I am. What do I... It was all about being this for me. Uh, so, so an uncle died and left me money, and I just put it right down on an L, L12. And I'm not saying it worked, but it sure made me look at the whole idea of being, because because the whole. Might correct me if I'm wrong. The whole L is looking at the notion of being from every which way you possibly can. And you go, okay, okay, now I know what being is. And I know what identity is. And from that point on, I just kind of quick marched my way out. And hmm. hello. Did they officially put out a declared SV declare on you? Never. I never saw one. Mm. They probably didn't. I, mm. No, after a while they didn't. I, I've seen my name on lists. Mm. Oh, I see. Suppressing people, but I've never yeah. never got yeah. the golden rod. Yeah. There's another word I've never said. In four golden years. rod. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So let's now move on to the theme very dear to your heart, and that is society's generalized sneering 
and disparaging of people that don't fit into the mold. You talk a lot in your books about the word binary. And, you know, all of computer, it's a plus or minus. It's <laughs> the, the binaries are so much part of existence. People don't realize how it's all rigged to be one side or the other. And you're very embracing. I love the way one of your books has the little phrase, and the rest of us. Can you describe that book a little bit, please? Uh, it, was, it was my first book. It was called Gender Outlaw on Men, Women, and the Rest of Us. Um, by that time, it was 1988 or 9, somewhere in there, um, this whole thing of, I know I'm not a man, I must be a woman, because there weren't any other choices. Mm -hmm. And so, oh God, I went through the whole thing. I became a woman, and yay. And women didn't feel any better than man felt. Mm. It was, it's like, if you're running a race horse, a, a, a horse race, mm. and you tie the front legs of half the horses, and the hind legs of the other half of the horses, and you expect them to run a race. Ain't gonna happen. Um, the way biological sex is used to monitor culture is, is very, very, very strict. And this is biological sex as defined by 20th century medicine. Mind you, 21st century uh, science, 21st century science knows that there, there's not a, a binary mm. in, in anywhere in nature, in, in, in life forms that we know of. Um, you mentioned computers. Sure, that's a machine. We created that. Uh, we create code. And that, that works really well. But we're not fucking machines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I realized that not men, not woman, there was no word for it. Mm. So I would just call myself not man, not woman. Someone smart, uh, maybe three or four years ago, came up with the word non-binary, mm. which is really cool because it's a word that defines you by what you're not. Hmm. And that's what I was doing, not man, not woman. And when you define yourself by what you're not, hmm. you've got limitless possibilities for what you want to be. Hmm. And you don't have to stay in any one of the many length of time. Hmm. Ah. 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 That's good answer. Very, very well, very well spoken. You know, it's actually quite cult-like to have black and white think. A million shades of gray. It's not black, it's not white. Mm. David Miscavige went up on an international event and said, you are either with us or against us. He did the black and white. You're either, there's no sitting on the fence. You're either with us or you're toast. That's cult like no million shades of gray. Gotta be black, gotta be white. George W. Bush used the same phrase after 9-11. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Exact same phrase. You're either with us or against us? Maybe mm -hmm. maybe Miscavige stole that from him. He plagiarizes <laughs> all kinds of things. But what is disturbing, what I resent, is how people poke their nose into other people's sexuality and criticize it it's nobody's darn business except the participants i don't get it either karen that's that's the big mystery i i don't get bullies i i, I don't understand them i don't get why people are so interested if someone says no that's not what i am oh okay mm -hmm. fine and I'm not saying that 
if a four-year-old says, you know, sign male at birth, I'm not a boy. You go, okay, you're not a boy. What are you? Mm -hmm. I'm a girl. Okay, you're a girl. And I want you to know, honey, you can be a girl for as long as you want to be. And if you want to change your mind tomorrow or anytime, you can do that too. You don't go, too many parents go, oh, okay, okay, my child is a girl. Um, I have to do the medical cattle shoot all the way to surgery. And you go, mm. I'm glad you said that. Very good. Yeah. That causes resentment. Youngsters having their bodies altered. And sometimes, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, because like you say, the range permits you to go in different the different directions now i'm a fan of what they call puberty blockers hmm. and these have been tested and all the, the, the reputable medical establishments have given it a stamp of approval and it keeps puberty from happening until you're old enough and maybe smart enough and wise enough to know which way you want to go. Um, and then in terms of young girls growing up, you don't end up with breasts that have to come off when you're 24. Mm. In terms of boys growing up, you don't end up with, you know, a deep voice and hair all over your body that has to be electrolysized it's it's a big favor it's a big kindness and when it comes down to it there aren't that many kids who request that what mm -hmm. maybe in the united states a thousand what's the fucking difference you know there are these laws about oh only only real women can play women's sports in high school. Oh, really? How many trans girls are trying to play sports in your whole state? Hmm. Well, none yet. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's comparable to before there was such a thing as gay marriage. Hmm. That was the big right wing drum to beat mm. but now that people have understood that yeah you know what the hell people love each other they can get married that's great mm. now that that's happened uh they're on to the next drum to beat and that's me and my people mm. Mm. i'm sorry I'm kate, blah, 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 blah. no you're doing great kate you are considered an authority on gender theories. You are invited just to <laughs> share and you're endlessly invited by universities and colleges and da and talk. One thing I want you to cover, one thing I want you to be, because you inspire, that's the word, inspirational. Can you please, tw about 10, 12 years ago, you develop cancer of the lungs, but you beat even cancer. God, you just are a conqueror. You just conquer and beat the odds. Tell me about how you survived cancer. My memoir, Queer and Pleasant Danger, had just been published. I was out and about on tour, and I started passing out on stage, literally bonk falling over Jeez. people would catch me and when i got back home to new york my doctor called me in for a cat scan and they found lung cancer um i'm i'm not wealthy i've, I've never had much extra extra money i i can pay my rent I can feed myself and I contribute to feeding the cats and the dogs and my partner. Um, but we've never had enough. And, and all of a sudden, 
I, I didn't have insurance and here I was with lung cancer. It wasn't me who conquered it. It was a couple of dear friends put up a crowdsourcing page. This was before there were many of those kind of things done. And we, because we had found a place in Chicago that could zero in on what I had. Um, none of the places in New York could, but it was so expensive. And within a week, people gave me $100,000. Was this on Tony Ortega's page? It must have been. The GoFundMe? Was, probably mm. was partly, yeah. Mm. So, Within a if, week? If, if, if you're watching and you were one of the people who gave me money, thank you for helping me live. I did. <laughs> oh, but, thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kate, um, did, was it targeted immune therapy they gave you? Because it was just getting, getting off the ground several, a few years ago. You don't it know was, what? It was some kind of... It was in a clinical trial, in the third clinical trial, and I would fly out to Chicago uh, every other week. Um, they have a program for cancer patients that corporate jets fly you out for free. Mm. And um, we used the money I got to stay in a, you know, a motel and, and eat nearby. And that held, kept it at bay, and then it came back, and I was at chemo and radiation basically for two years, mm. and by 2014, it was gone, and I'm wow. in remission. Wow. Not good. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very lucky. Well... They took out a third of a lung. Oh. Oh. Mm. Well, that's just... Looking at this... What type of cancer was it? What was it called? Lung cancer. Uh, oh, just lung cancer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Non-small cell or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah. I just want to just give a comment that a friend of yours, Mike Rinder, is now battling cancer. And he's been such an icon for all of us. He helped me get my head straight and helped me pull out of, pull out of the cult. So uh, you were not fourth stage cancer, right? You didn't have fourth stage. It hadn't progressed to other areas. It was just still only in the lung area. Right? It got into my lymph nodes, um, but didn't oh. get any further. Oh, they, took out, they took out a bunch of lymph nodes. Um, but for, for Mike, please, if you haven't you weren't been aware of this, or maybe you haven't had you know extra cash to give him, um, but maybe you do now, please go to his web page and I'm sure they're going to flash that up right now. Yes. And you'll find a donate button there. Please give him what you can. He's given us all so much. Okay, that was so sweet of you. That was very, very nice. Yeah. Um, that was very nice, Kate. Thank you. But that just shows how loved you are. I know in our private communication, you've been a little sad on some of the pushback and the critics. But Kate, 100,000 in one week, isn't that evidence of your popularity and how, how appreciated you are? Jeez. Of course. And, and I think when, when you and I were talking, I was specifically talking about um, 
why I haven't been in attendance at many ex Sea Org parties or conferences. Ah. That's that's because I want to. I totally want to. There's so many friends that I'd love to hug. And I know who would hug me. I know that. Mm -hmm. And I've gone to a few and I've been laughed at and yelled at. And you know what? I just don't go to places where that's likely to happen anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm 75 years old. I don't set myself up for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. If you've wondered why I wasn't there with you, that's why I did. I love you no less. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, in Janice Grady's parties, <clears throat> none of that would happen. And I'll buy your airfare to fly you in. If you weren't happy, you can fly out the next day. Well, we absolutely have to have you. You're 75 years old. We've got to have you at least at one event who you reunite with will just give you such enormous pleasure. You you will be record. You don't even know how much. You don't know how you <laughs> how you're admired and recognized. <coughs> to be, you talk about bullies. <coughs> you joined and so did I. The ultimate bully dominator. In Scientology, when you sign to be staff, I don't know if you've ever seen the staff enrollment form, you have to write every sexual incident you've ever had, how, when, for how long, <laughs> what sexual toy. They want to do every square inch of your sexuality. This is just applying to join this elite group. Unbelievable. You know, you, you can join the Catholic Church, the Methodist, the Episcopalian, blah, blah, blah. Nobody zeroes in with such intensity to if your that story. If that had been presented to me <laughs> in 1970, I would have said, thank you very much. I'm going to go out and smoke a joint and keep on traveling. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. 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 Religion really intertwines itself with sexuality and goes overboard on it. In Scientology, you know, you were married to Molly Bonstein, uh, Molly Baxter now. Not in your day, but in this day, there are three people in the marriage. You, your spouse or your partner, whether girl or boy, and Scientology. Yeah. Those three are all in bed together. And every single thing you say Excuse is... me, that just gave me wonderful pictures, but... <laughs> well, you've always maintained a sense of humor no matter what. And are you planning on another book, Kate? I sure hope so, yes, um, because now that I've said I'm not a man, I'm not a woman, how do you navigate the world like that? Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a Zen koan that I, I found out about 30 years ago. And koans are like little teaching stories or, or parables or sayings. And you're just meant to think about them. That's all. And the one I've been holding on to for 30 years, I haven't gone a day without thinking about it, is the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Hmm. So like... Uh, the way you would go about getting an ice cream cone for yourself is the same way you would be going about getting a car. It, hmm. if, you, if you play with it, it happens. So 
not men, not women, saying no to a gender binary or a sex binary, you start saying no to other binaries. Mm. And pretty soon you're living in a world where you don't have any binaries left. Mm. And that's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, you can start understanding identity beyond a fixed identity and instead understand identity uh, moving through space and time. Mm. Always in motion. Never the same thing, moment to moment. And that's very different than saying, I am a this, I am a that. Mm -hmm. uh, you went to a conference with the Dalai Lama when he was in New York. What did you... The Dalai Lama gave a beautiful sentence. He said, my religion is kindness, which is similar to what you say. Don't be mean. Another way of saying it is, be kind, be tolerant, open up your narrow viewpoint and embrace a oneness. Let's say you have a young son and he's three or four years old and he comes to you and says, Mom, Dad, I'm a girl. You go, okay, oh, you're a girl. What does girl mean to you? Look, we've got a four-year-old. Gender is something that adults don't really understand. We can't expect a four-year-old to understand. And so what we explain is, yes, you can. You're a girl. No problem. Tomorrow you can be a boy. Day after you can be a girl again. You can decide you're not a boy, you're not a girl, you're a, you're a purple unicorn. But with sparkles. Now, uh, you know, the Beatles did that song, the wall, I am the walrus, I am he, I am you and you are me and we are all together. Do you remember that? Look at how dear you are. Song, huh? You are such a dear thing. Oh. You are. Oh, okay. You're, you're, you're too kind. The, the, the thing is, can you, as we wrap up, Kate, I, I got to have you back. I, I We haven't covered... I've got, I wanted to just introduce you, but I need you back. I want to ask you, tell me as we wind up what you took away from the Dalai Lama and how you expanded and elaborated on that great Dalai Lama meeting. Mm -hmm. The title of his teaching that day was profound wisdom and vast compassion, the essence of eloquence. Mm. I want to write books with titles like that. You know, I, I don't. <laughs> I, gender outlaw, wacka wacka. <laughs> but profound wisdom and vast compassion, the essence of eloquence. The Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist define eloquence as the telling of a truth in such a way that it eases suffering. Mm, beautiful. Right? Beautiful. And um, the more suffering that's eased by your telling of the truth, mm. uh, the more eloquent you've been. Mm. It, it, key is telling of a truth, not the telling of the truth. Buddhists understand that there are different levels of truth in the world and in life. Mm. everybody's got a different truth for what gender and sex is. You talk to 10 people, you get 10 different definitions. Of course, we're at each other's throats about that. Mm. I, before I, I die, I would like to come up with an arguable truth of gender, not the definitive truth of gender, just one that, you know, people mm. could subscribe to if they wanted to, that would ease a great deal of suffering mm. because so much suffering is done in the name of sex and gender is, 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 is caused in the name of sex and gender and I want to remove that I want to do what I can to remove that 
that's that's really good. That there are countries that actually kill someone because they're gay, hurl them over in certain. I, I've seen this on the internet. It's it's horror. Well, they've even killed people. That young beautiful boy who was tied to a fence and stoned and killed. This is in the United States, just because of their sexual orientation. So I think a book like that would be very valuable, Kate. It's Thank very you. valuable. I, I there is I an can... audience for that, huh? I, I hope I can do it. Here's the thing. It's like those two years of chemotherapy and radiation give me what's called chemo brain. You can look it oh. up. It's a factual thing. Oh. It's a brain. It's brain fog. And that oh. plus I'm 75. You start losing memory when you're that old. Mm -hmm. That, plus I've got long COVID, and that's another level of brain fog. I don't find words as easily as I used to. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm working on some stuff. I, I think I'm going to be coming out with a video pretty soon. Um, we'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see. But I'd like to make it a book. All right. Well, Kate, you're one of these people, it's not common that you leave Earth a slightly better place than when you arrive. You have a legacy. You're simply iconic in the trans world, but you're, you're broader than that. It's not trans versus <laughs> non-trans. This, this non-binary, I finally understand what it really means. So you are in some ways a big educator and teacher. You're not just an actress or an author or a cancer survivor. You are a teacher. You educate. Now, I would like to tell the audience, if you want to, if you're curious about Kate, just go to Amazon and put the word Kate Bonstein books and <laughs> Amazon have all her books. How many books have you written? Half a dozen? Five? Something like that. So five or six books. Um, but even more, if you want to enter the world of Kate and understand this <laughs> binary dichotomy, <laughs> Go to YouTube and put in Kate Bornstein. It'll just blow you. Her interviews are riveting, just riveting. Kate, I love you very much, and I will talk to you soon. Don't go away now. Just stay there after I stop recording because, yeah, go ahead. Miss, just thank you so much for all these kind words. I will leave you with one little bit of wisdom I learned. Um... It takes one to know one. <laughs> That's the truth. Thank you. So Kate. bless your yes. heart. Thank you. Blessings to you. We'll talk again soon. Bye bye and lots of love. Bye bye. bye. Thank you.